Hello, everyone. Hello. Let's throw my back. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Yankee sister. Hey, Maria Graham. D. Hey, baby. Unicorn lady. Hey, honey. How y'all doing today? So glad y'all here. I'm just getting this set up here. I hope you all been having a wonderful Sunday. I've been having a great, great weekend, y'all. Mm, it's been amazing. Yes. Oh, let me turn this off, y'all. I hear it. <laughs> Let's see. All right. All right. So you all let me know about my sound and sight. Let me know. Is everything good? Is it okay? Let me know. Hey, hey, Mara. Hey, Precious. Sean C. Hey, baby. Oh, wait, I seen another name. Uh, Muhammad. Hey, baby. How you doing? Um, Raquetta Harrison. Hey, baby. How you doing? Hey, Mary. Hey, Santisha. Miss Native Cherokee. Hey. Okay, you can hear me. I'm sorry, y'all. I've been drinking all kinds of juice here. <laughs> hey, Renee, how you doing, baby? Oh, thank you so much, my sister. Thank you. Thank you, Yankee sister. Uh, yeah, I've been having a great, great weekend. It's been jam-packed, but, you know, I, I'm just, ooh, it's good. <laughs> it's been good. Mara, Mara says, um, Sound good and you're looking gorgeous. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. <laughs> I'm feeling amazing. I'm feeling amazing. Yes, I am. Thank God for feeling amazing, right? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Yankee sister. That's so sweet. All right, Maria Graham. Gotcha, baby. Thank you. So listen, guys, if you all are looking at the replay, right? I want to thank you all for stopping by, and I hope you pick up something that you can use. All right, all right. Uh, I seen you uh, had fun time at the beach. Oh, it was so fun, y'all! It was so fun. Oh, you love my hair. Oh, thank you so much. So, listen, when we was um, when we was in the water, I didn't want to take off my hat because it, I know it's crazy. The hat is waterproof, but I didn't want the water in my hair because the water is, is salty, of course. But, you know, eventually I took it off, but I was very reluctant to. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so much fun, y'all. It was so much fun. We had a great day. Great day. And when we got home, everybody showered and washed hairs and everybody was asleep somewhere on the floor, somewhere, you know. <laughs> it was a fun time, yeah. Hey, Tammy, how you doing, baby? Hey, hey, baby, how you doing? Keep spreading that positive vibe. Your smile lights up the room. Oh, sweetheart, thank you so much. Thank you. And, you know, I pray that everywhere we go <clears throat> and everything we do, we bring a sweet spirit in the room with us, right? You know when you go in a room uh, if the vibe is right or not. Thank you, my love, for that. You know, you know if the vibe is, uh, you know, but you know when there is some sweet spirits in the house, right? And I thank you for recognizing that. I truly do, baby. Yeah. Yep. Uh, maybe your son will join uh, you guys at the beach next time. Mm, I don't know. So next month is my oldest grandson's birthday. So Jody's planning for that. He'll be 20 on May 14th. He'll be 20 years old. Oh, my God. Just to think of that, right? <laughs> yeah, but he's going to be 20. And um, so... I hope my son join us, you know, but, you know, he got his own thing, you know, 47 years old. Do your thing, bro. <laughs> yeah, but he enjoyed all the pictures and the videos. So, yeah. 
Got my hands in the dirt now. Okay, we'll uh, we'll chat off and uh, okay, my love. Oh, I understand. I was out there a little while, but we got some rain. It's raining as we speak, and I'm loving it because we haven't had any rain in a while. So, hey, Robinson, baby, how you doing? May 14th, my daughter's birthday. Really? Yes. That's his birthday. My birthday was yesterday. Really happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my dear sister. Happy birthday to you. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday. You can hear my voice right up to <laughs> I song a lot today, but that's okay. I love it. I love it. Hey, Pete. Hello, everyone. We had a gorgeous weekend. Just a couple of more cold days this week before it should start warming up for good. All right. All right, man. Hey. Oh, baby, you are so welcome. I thank you for always being here, honey. I thank you. Miss Linda, you're rocking your style at the yeah, at the beach. <laughs> that water was cold. You know, it makes you think about that song, right? It chilled my body, but not my soul. Because, honey, <laughs> it was chilling. It really was. <laughs> it really was. Hey, Renee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Y'all say happy birthday to Unicorn Lady. Her birthday was yesterday, so that was the 23rd. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Hey, bro. Hey, man. Listen, I miss your live, but I did watch the replay. Gave you a big old thumbs up. Yes, I did enjoy it. Yes, man. Yeah, happy birthday, Unicorn Lady. Happy birthday. Hey, Bob Brownie, how you doing, baby? Good to see you. All right. Oh. I was finally able to transplant most of my uh, leek seedlings. Okay, cool, cool. So today we're going to talk about First, I want to get your intake on this. So let's talk about a couple of vegetables, whatever vegetables you want to talk about. How do you know when your vegetables are ready to harvest? Tell me that. My daughter's birthday is on the 26th. My baby's going to be 30. Go ahead, baby. Ooh, Roro. Hey, baby. How you doing? Hey, Miss Lynn and everyone in chat. Hey, honey, how you doing? Good to see you. All right. Hey, Priscilla. Hey, honey, how you doing? When they look like that package. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what it is, bro. When it look like what? The seed pack? When it look like the pack? That's what you're saying? Yeah. And that's that's a good way. Hey, the front porch garden. How you doing, baby? Good to see you. Good to see you. So Broke says when his vegetables look like the seed pack is ready to harvest. Hey, Andel, how you doing, baby? Good to see you. All right. Uh, happy Mag say, hey, y'all. Hey, baby. Hello, everyone. Miss Linda, happy birthday to the unicorn lady. Yes, happy birthday, baby. Uh, Brooke said to pick on the CPAC. Yeah, that's that's a good way. That's a good way. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is a cool thing when you look at your CPAC and your vegetable look like that vegetable. You know, like when I grew um, the leisure. And I looked at the seed pack, and yes, my legs look just like those seed pack. So I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> it's time. That's that's a good way. Now, I know a lot of people, like if the seed pack says, 
you know, um, this vegetable take 120 days for maturity. They literally have a little calendar or something, you know, to count 110 days. It's a good idea, family, but it just saved me. You know, I, I, I just can't. I may never harvest mines. Wait a minute, Myra. <laughs> Myra. I may never harvest mine if it has to look like the sea pack. <laughs> I get you, baby. Some crops have a foliage dieback to let you know it's time to harvest. And that is so true. And we're going to talk about some of those vegetables that the foliage tells you when it's ready because they die. They die. Right. Um, what'd you say, baby? Oh, I read that one. This one is what I wanted to know. Happy birthday, Roro. Roro, it's your birthday too, baby. Oh, oh boy. Wait a minute now. when it's mature enough to eat or make a meal. Okay, but how do you know it's matured? How do you know? Just a question. As you said in one of your previous video, she gonna tell you, she does say it, she does say it. And many of your vegetables say it. But let's talk about the garlic one, okay? Uh, Broke says, my soil funny, the dates never match up. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. I can't I, I can't even phantom me counting 120 days or 97 days. Or, you know, it, it probably is the right thing to do, but I just don't do it. No, <laughs> I don't do it. Priscilla says, oh, okay, wait a minute. I was, um, I was going good. We kept having high winds. Weather finally got to the 70s and the 80s. But a gust of wind yanked my greenhouse right off the ground. Oh, my God. Ripped from the anchor tabs. I'm receiving a refund. Oh, wow, my baby. Well, drop you some more seeds. Go get you some starts and drop some more seeds. Yeah. Happy birthday, Roro. Happy birthday, baby. It was 422. All right. We're going to sing your song, okay? Just give me one second. But I, I want to sing it. I want to get you. Chew that, Myra. <laughs> Myra. I have a question about the foliage. I would like to cut some of my garlic skate, my garlic tops or onion tops. But will I kill the garlic growth? So what I'm going to say to you about that is I truly don't know if you would kill the, the garlic growth. I don't know. But what I do know is that you're taking away a lot of energy from the plant. Because remember that the leaves of the plant, this is how the, the plant gets photosynthesis, right? And you're talking about a root vegetable, right? So garlic needs their chives in order to grow big and healthy. I see a lot of people cut their garlics and their onion tops. I don't understand it, but some things it's not for me to understand. So I don't do it, especially when I'm growing for the bulb. Now, if I'm growing green onions and you know, yeah, I, I'm going to get them because that's what they're giving, right? But when I want a bulb, I want the, the bulb to receive all the energy they can, and they are going to get it by their chives. This is how they get energy from the sun. So if you take them away, yeah, I think you could start. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do two or three, cut them, and leave the rest alone and see what happens, okay? <clears throat> but I don't cut the, the bulb, my bulb chives at all, no. All right, 
Good question, Ann. Thank you, honey. Um, Ms. Nader say, Ms. Linda, thanks to you and a few other gardeners, I did my first live stream today. Did you now? About my plants in the greenhouse. Tried not to overlap Brook Farmer's Live. I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. Didn't see it. I, I was at church for a while, a couple of them. And um, yeah, it was just so busy. Uh, I came back. I was cooking myself something to eat and I got to listen to Brooke's, uh, the replay of Broke Live. Yeah. Um, great question, Andale. Yes, it was. Um, would love to know that myself. Hey, yes, it is. And you know, I, I, like I say, I see a lot of people cutting their chives off their onions. You know, if it's green onions, I do that. I take, but if I'm growing for the bulk, I don't take it from her because she need it. She need it. Um, Roro say, thanks uh, you all for the birthday wishes. Okay, my baby. Mara say, so sorry, Phyllis. I'm still trying to get my greenhouse level. Yeah, it could be crazy if the weather, you know, that's crazy. Uh, and they'll say, thank you, Miss Linda. I appreciate that. Okay, my baby. Chauncey said, wow, never knew this. I just used some garlic chives earlier in my food. Dang. <laughs> Glad I got some um, some more growing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, all our plants need the photosynthesis, and they get it from their leaves. <clears throat> If they don't have their leaves, something is going to be missing, right? So if you want chives, like th this is what I do, because I love the garlic. Uh, <coughs> I love the garlic chives. I plant garlic for the bulbs, and I plant garlic for the chives. And I get two separate containers for that, right? And that's how I enjoy it. Yeah. Our garlic chive overwintered and the new growth is huge. I guess I didn't need to uh, need the new seeds after all. I could never get them to germinate last year. Well, there you go. <laughs> never knew uh, either. Uh, great reasoning. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just... Just try it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Just try it for yourself. Because as I say, I've seen a lot of people, you know, cut them in, you know, but do your own experiment. Yeah. Hey, baby, how you doing, Miss Lawrence? She said, hello, Lady 511. How you doing, baby? Makes so much sense. Thank you for the knowledge, Miss Lawrence. You're so welcome, Chauncey. I need to cut garlic chive bulbs. I need to cut garlic chive bulbs. Okay. Just the green part. They just keep giving and giving. So, okay, you never cut them. Okay. Yeah. Well, as I said, the bulbs, I don't cut. But what I want to eat, I get them. And so I just grow in different containers for that. Um, Priscilla, she's talking to Myra. All right. Okay. So is there anyone else can tell me about what do you um what do you uh know about when your vegetables are um ready? Let's say peppers, any kind of pepper. How do you know your peppers are ready? Tell me that. Mm. Mm. All right, the size and color, that is great because in the study, it says this, one of the most important things you see about peppers, their color, the peppers are shiny. They're shiny. 
they are not dull. And sometimes you see dull peppers, they, you know, they're dull in color. There's no shine to them. Mm -mm. Something is wrong with them. Are they missing some kind of nutrients going on? But if your peppers is nice and shiny and glossy, bang, you got it. Yeah. And these are just some of the ways you know when your vegetables are ready. So let's go back to the onion and the garlic. So garlic, hard, um, hard neck garlic, it sends out a scape, right? It sends out a scape. And hey, um, New York Gardener, it sends out a scape. And that lets you know it won't be long. It won't be long before your garlic is ready, right? Also, the chives will die. They will turn yellow, not only in the garlic, of course, the onions, they will die, turn yellow and brown and fall over. They will fall over. When they fall over, turn yellow and brown, harvest them, baby, harvest them. Yes. How you doing, sweetheart? Good to see you. When they are size I need. Okay, that's another thing because let's talk about root vegetables. Um, beets, all right? I know my hot peppers are ready when they turn colors and shiny. Exactly. Exactly. And that's a lot of them. You know, they turn colors and they get very shiny. So it doesn't matter what variety they all do that, right? So uh, Mary says, um, it is a red pepper. I wait until it's full color, but sometimes the pepper rots on the plant before it ripens. So sometimes I harvest it early and put them in paper bags. Hmm. Yeah. And I see a lot of peppers will do that. Uh, they will rot like in a part of it. And sometimes I'm thinking that is, you just waited too long. It's, it's been ripe for a little while. Sometimes that could be the reasoning for that, right? All right. Another thing about when your vegetables are ready, let's take watermelons, right? the aroma of the fruit or the vegetable, when you can smell their aroma and be aware because the critters, hmm, they smell it too. And they will sit there and watch your vegetable grow big and beautiful. And when they are ready, they will come with their knife and fork to sit at the table. So that's another thing. The aroma of your fruits or vegetables will tell you they are ready to be harvested. Yeah. Let's see here. One second, fam. All right. Squirrels and worms will tell you. So tell me about the worms, Myra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what got me was a possum. Squirrels, they know when your sunflowers are ready. I have had squirrels take the entire head off my sunflower and pull it back to where he lives. Yeah, I can already tell that the critters are going to be big problem for us this year. Operation <laughs> relocation, yes, will be commencing soon, I get you. No lie, I smelled my peaches and picked them. Deer came and was mad, oh, got him. Listen, you get them before they get you. Yes. <laughs> yes. So another thing is, let's talk about who, uh, 
is there anyone here growing uh what is that vegetable wait a minute let me look at my notes here asparagus is there anyone here growing asparagus let me know you you broke you growing asparagus Healthy living with Wendy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. 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 So one thing that I've learned is to harvest asparagus. And I've seen a lot of people, they go out and they take a, um, a knife or uh, scissors and they cut their asparagus, right? Um, oh, she's talking to Myra. And, and they cut and they cut their asparagus. But really what you should do is go out and bend it down and it will snap. It will snap. So the reason of this, this theory is to bend it down and let it snap is that if you allow your asparagus to get too big, it will snap, but leave the woody part there because it will not snap it. So either you... You know, you could take it off with a knife or fork, but this is the way uh, it is said to be harvested. Just bend it down and let it snap on its own. Yeah. I have a two-year-old asparagus. Really? I'm growing asparagus, Tino. Okay, baby. Cool. The worms attack about the time you decided all oh, will harvest tomorrow. <laughs> And the leaves are missing the next day. Oh, my goodness. Gotcha. Yeah. And they have the nerve to come with the stem. <laughs> yeah, they're bold, baby, because, you know, they feel like, you know, this is their yard. You work in it, but. Mm. <laughs> hey, Kim, how you doing, baby? Video is video it interesting have a nice day i shall i shall As a matter of fact i have it in the queue right now i will drop it hey veggie farm baby how you doing i will drop that kim you know so let me go over a couple of more vegetables before we move on okay and somebody here already mentioned the shape and the size of the vegetable will also tell you they are ready to be harvested now, listen, family, sometimes we can't, we will harvest our vegetable too early or too late. <clears throat> but if you're looking for the maximum flavor from your vegetable, you want to harvest it when it is at its peak. Sometimes it's tough, but that's what gardeners do, right? That's what gardens do. It's tough. Um, so we talked about, uh, so broccoli. So if you're growing broccoli, you want to harvest your broccoli when the head is tight. You want your heads tight. Now, I seen a harvest. Well, I can't say, but you all will see it too. <laughs> and it is a beautiful harvest. And if you look at that broccoli, the heads is tight. You don't want your, your broccoli head to flower. It's just, if you harvest it when it's tight, you're going to get the maximum flavor from your vegetables. That's what that is about. Hello to everyone who has recently joined the chat. I just gave t a thumbs up. Oh, thank you, baby. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> with gardening and all your wonderful food. Wait a minute, y'all. Hold on a second. Oh, thank you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, honey. 
Um, see, I, I I lost my train of thought just that fast. All right. Yes. Anyway, we talked about the broccoli, but root vegetables. We talked about root vegetables, and they're so important, like beets and turnips and rutabagas, even kohlrabi, which is above above the soil, but she is a bulb. If you allow her to get too big, and I've had two this season, it got woody at the bottom. And I had to take away at least, I'm sorry, half of this vegetable because it was woody. So what I try to do is harvest my root vegetables when they are a tennis ball size. Hey, Nikki. Hey, baby. How you doing? When it's about a tennis ball size, and then I know that I, I will have the maximum flavor from this vegetable. Right? So tell me this here. How do you all, do you all go for the big, big root vegetables? Let me know. Oh, yeah. Tell me what you say, baby. I see you, honey. Yeah. All right. How you doing, baby? Hey. Um, Nikki say my kohlrabi grew big, but it did not form a ball. No, not sure why. Oh, wow. Mm. Um, let's see. Let's see, can I go over here? Brooke say, I get when uh, the getting is good. I don't wait. <laughs> and that's true because... As I say, you know, critters, critters are out there, man, and they, uh, they coming, they coming, they're hungry. Um, so yeah, they get it. I do try to grow some big carrots. So the thing about growing big carrots, and and I know everybody, you know, want the big, big carrots. You know, when they pull it out the ground, they want it big, big. You know, <laughs> I find the big carrots. Or tougher. I, I I prefer the small ones because they are they they sweeter, they juicier. They are. I mean, that's just me, y'all. <laughs> I never knew when my carrots are ready. I try to uh, uncover the tops, but it's still a total guess. And I think it's a guess for everybody. Uh, and hey, Jody. Hey, Jody, daughter. How you doing, baby? I have problems with my bulb vegetables forming a bulb. Garlic, onion, beets, my kohlrabi did uh, did good. Good, 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 good. So one of the things I want to say about growing bulb vegetables as well as carrots is that you want to give, yes, yes, bro, that's them. Mm -hmm. You want to give your bulb vegetable space space if they are too crowded if you have them too close to each other you will not get that ball you will not it will not get mm -mm, mm -mm. you'll get a bump <laughs> so if you take a grow bag if you have a grow bag and say you're growing beets put about three plants in a five gallon grow bag just three and watch it and it is going to do well, but they need space, baby, space. Yeah. So one thing I learned uh, last season with the growing of Big Baby. So if you all know Big Baby, who in here know who Big Baby was? I, I, I'm going to just ask that. <laughs> Uh, here in Michigan Zone 6A, we can get away with letting them grow really big without losing sweetness. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, I like, um, like Broke says, I like the little small ones, the little small fingerling. It's just, they just so easy for me. I, I love it. I struggle with root vegetables that were okay, baby. Big baby. Yeah, so big baby, the New Orleans Garden, you know, I know who big baby was. Yeah. <laughs> so big baby was my broccoli Romanesco, right? And so the story goes like this. Ooh, that sounds like one of them old rap songs. But anyway. <laughs> For six years, I had been trying to grow a broccoli Romanesco. Yeah. For six years, I failed. I did, family. I did. I talked to my nephew, Chris, from Back to Our Roots Homestead, and we was, like, throwing things at me. So he said, listen, take one plant. He gave me some soil, put together. Well, you know, he told me what to do. And then he said, I want you to take one Romanesco, one and put her in a 17 gallon container by herself. There were big baby and she was a big baby. So that taught me so much about space, space family. So when you have root vegetables, give them space. You will get that bulb you need, okay? I promise you. I know big baby. Okay, veggie farm, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Broccoli Romanesco is such a cool looking crop. Not all, listen, I agree. She's cool looking and she is delicious, yo. As a matter of fact, I think uh, I grew four Romanescos and all, but big baby was the biggest. Now, the other Romanescos I had, they were in um, my raised bed. But none of them grew big as Big Baby. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yes. So that's Chris from Back to Our Roots Homestead. That's the one helped me grow Big Baby. Yep. Yeah. Jody's speaking to everybody. Everybody's speaking to Jody. Yep. So, you know, Broke, I thought you was going to drop um, a Romanesco, you know. I really did. Did you? Guava family. Guava. If I thin carrots kind of late, will the others still uh, grow bigger? Yes. Yes. They will, baby. Yeah. I dropped it and it died. Oh, grab me. Oh, <laughs> try to get in a fall, um, bro. I don't drink a lot of this because I really like um, red wine. Let's see what I got here. So this is my last one I have of this one. And this is a sangria. It's really good. but And I was going to drink it, but it's been sitting in the windowsill and it's hot. I, I like my wine cold. Guava, babies. Guava. Guava. So root vegetables to me now that I got this, I got this thing going on, right? In my head, I know that all we really need to do, give them space. And Nikki, you will get it. Hey, baby. Hey, sweet equity. Hey. Hey, Miss Linda New Orleans. Go, hey, baby. Game nerd mom. Hey, honey. Hey. Say, ooh, it is, Roro. It is. <laughs> Sandra Dominique. Hey, baby. Hey. Hey. How you doing? So, so it's like, um, Pete, Pete, you all are just beginning to put your vegetables out. Does the Romanesco taste like broccoli? Um, wait a minute. Was gifted some seedlings. 
let me just say this to you, my sister. The name of this vegetable is broccoli Romanesco. She is not a broccoli at all. I know that's crazy, but she's not. She's not a broccoli at all. So let me tell you who she really is. She's a cauliflower. <laughs> I know it's crazy. So you know how broccoli is um, soft and flowery, you know, the, the, the bald part, it's nice and soft. A broccoli Romanesco is hard like cauliflower. She is a cauliflower. Why did they name this vegetable broccoli? I don't have a clue, but she's not a broccoli at all. She's a cauliflower. And that's how she tastes. That's how she tastes. But she's fresh and she got a sweetness to her. And I absolutely love it. I love it um, grilled or roasted the most. Really good. Really good. Um, TLC, hey baby. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> um, okay, we got that. Does rumor okay? So if you like cauliflower, drop some seeds, sister. You may like it. You may like it. I tell you, she is gorgeous. I mean, just growing in your garden is just beautiful. You pat when I pass by and I just oh man. <laughs> She's good looking. She's good looking. Yes. Uh yep. We just started transplanting the uh the cold weather crop. Really, perennials. Just started um to wake up here finally. We're three weeks later. Oh wow than 2021, if not four weeks. Wow. No negativity in the garden, Miss Linda. <laughs> I love that video. Yes, ma'am. And you know, I love my family. I love, I love when friends and neighbors uh, stop by. Um, I love for them to try vegetables and, and, and they talk about uh, their parents and their grandparents, and they they start remembering things they hadn't thought about in years. Um, I've had a lot of tears shed in the garden, but sweet memory tears, you know, uh, tears of um, remembering a time they had with their grandfather and what they did and what he did, you know. Uh, but for someone to come in and disrespect it or, you know, having beef with somebody. No, you go bring that beef out of my garden, period. And it's another thing, like I was saying, is uh, when we sit to the table or wherever you're sitting in the living room, wherever, and you have a plate of food, the first thing most of us do is we bless our food. We bless our food. We pray and we thank God for it. You know, so while these plants are growing, mm -mm, you're not going to bring any evil spirits back in my garden. I'm not going to let, I'm just not going to let you do it. I was very happy though that my Jody wasn't there, right? Jody wasn't there. So uh, somebody said, well, Miss Linda, you was just too calm with it. So this is another thing I've learned. You know, listen, fam, I wasn't always this together and calm, you know, not always. <laughs> that 20 year old Linda would have been fire. <laughs> but, you know, with time, you learn. If I would have went at her, like she was saying, and cursing, and so, so if, if she called me a bad name and I call her a bad name and say Yankee sister was sitting on the side. 
So the question Yankee sister may ask, well, who is the bad person here? And you know who it would be? Both of us. Both of us. So what I've learned to do is to treat fire. You know what I'm talking about? That brimstone just throwing out there. I learned how to treat them with calmness and sweetness. My grandmama say, baby, you could give more with sugar than you could give with vinegar, right? So I learned how to give them the God in me. I allow Jesus to speak and I shut up because if I speak, I will get it all wrong, all bad, <laughs> you know? So I marched her out and I told her when she gets some respect, I'm going to welcome her back. Mm? Yeah. See you later, queen. Got the work in the morning. Awesome info as info as USA. Okay, my baby. I don't know what that means, bro. Tell me. Don't go. Tell me what they mean. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you for being here, though. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm good. Okay. Two weeks away from planting everything here. All right. Yes, I feel you, ma'am. Yes, yes. Hey, cool weather farmer. All right. Harvesting my second kohlrabi tomorrow. I have two broccoli robs. Baby, babies that's half sprout. Oh, well, great. You doing it. I'm learning from you, my dear. I appreciate you. Amen. Amen, baby. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you just have to, when I had to grow into it, um, is this, like my grandmama said, Linda, are you strong? Are you strong? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, baby, I'm strong. She said, I ain't talking about that kind of strong. <laughs> so the kind of strong she's talking about is my mouth. Can I not answer? Right? Do you have the strength not to answer foolishness? And I do. I don't have to. I don't have to. And so that's how I get rid of things in my life that's crazy. I know most of you all, are, you know, I know most of you all around my age, you have grown into it too. You know it. All right, let's see. Amen, baby. Amen. All right. So Pete was talking about earlier is that how many of our vegetables, they die. And they tell us they're ready to be harvested by just dying. The foliage just dies. Um, Anne was talking about earlier that she cut her leaves from her onions or garlic, one or two. It kind of throws off the, the, the pattern of the process of the onion. If she don't have any chives, then what? You know? So that's another thing you should think about, you know, when you cut and things like that. Right. Hey, October, how you doing, baby? How are you? Barbara, oh, unicorn, please hit the like button. Oh, thank you, baby. Dropping six bush sugar baby watermelon seeds right now indoors to get a jump start. 81 today, storm 69 now, cold front coming. Back in the 50s from high temps next week. Wow, that is, that's a whirlpool you're going in, right? Oh, hey, Audacity Dawning. Hey, Miss Lynn and everyone. Hey, how you doing? Raketa says, I don't burn my good energy on negativity. Amen, baby. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to let nothing ruin my day. Not one thing. Mm-mm. No. 
So can I just trim off the brown leaves on my garlic? Yeah, you can. If the um, the leaves have died, yeah, you could take them off. Definitely. I do. I do sometimes too. Yeah. But I do have a video in the queue. And it's going over some of the same things that we're talking about now. Because I understand that some people like it in the video other than alive. So that's why I did it that way. It's cauliflower a brassica. I'm still trying to grow tomatoes. Please don't laugh. I'm not going to laugh. No. But yes, cauliflower is in the brassica family. Yes, they are. So listen, baby. We all have our struggles. All of us. I have been gardening all my life. And I just told you, for six years, I couldn't grow a broccoli Romanesco. So all of us have our struggles. And it doesn't matter how long you've been growing. Failure. Listen, when you are in the garden, this is nature, baby. This is nature. You can do everything right one season and have an awesome, amazing harvest. and Everything did great. And the next year you can do the exact same thing and nothing goes right. Nothing. Everything. <laughs> so this is nature. And let no one tell you, you know, they've been growing for 50 years and, and you know, no, we all fail. Every one of us, because we are dealing with nature, period, right? Someone was just saying how um, um, the wind came and tore everything up. That's what can happen. So the year we had a storm, I can't remember the name because all these storms, they get the bundle up in my head. But I had two 30-foot trees in my yard. One I planted, one I inherited when I came, when I purchased the property. I was in the window while the storm was going on. And I watched both of those trees went down. Both of them, both. I yelled to my son to come and look. I said, both of the trees is down. So that is what we're dealing with when we are growing a garden. We are dealing with nature. So baby, just because you cannot get your tomato straight, don't you worry. All right? We're going to help you as gardeners. We're going to help you, right? Because there's something that somebody else can't grow, you know. It just happens. Hey, G3J, J3GS Farms. How you doing, man? Good to see you here. Yeah. All right. Uh, my broccoli has a ton of side shoots. Now, that is good. That's a good stir fry right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm well. Oh, hey, Bernie. Hey, Bernie. How you doing, baby? Uh, nature, she is in charge. Amen. And that is the truth. I don't care how good you are. It don't matter. It don't matter. Hey, container crops. Hey, Miss Linda in the chat. Blessings to everyone. Thank you so much. God bless you too, baby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this year I have more aphids than the last two years. Really? So how are you taking care of? Them? How are you getting rid of them? Let me know. Yes, Lord, we failed. And we get back. <laughs> yes, we do, baby. Yes, we do. Shoot, I be laying down there dropping a seed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Miss Linda, I purchased a two foot my lemon tree. Can you share how you feed your citrus <laughs> trees to help it bloom without me buying anything? Uh, gardening products. Okay. So one of the things um, I, it, this is what I use, all right? 
I use my super juice on my trees, and that is allowing the garden to feed the garden, which is just water in a bucket and all the leaves and brown leaves and green leaves and everything that I don't eat from my garden. It goes in that bucket. It stays there for about three days. I take that water and I feed all my, I feed everybody, y'all, everybody, trees, vegetables. If the flowers in the bed with the vegetables, they going to get some too. <laughs> I gave some to my blueberries earlier this morning. Everybody got some and they all happy. That's just what I do. So that is you're not purchasing anything. That is the garden feet in the garden. All right. You are the best, Miss Linda. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> hey, I can't grow beets. They look like fingers. <laughs> they look like fingers, Melinda, because tell me this. Am I right or wrong? You have a lot of them bunched together. Let me know. P. Williams. Hey, baby, how you doing? All right. Guava. Bob Brown say guava. Nature happens. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Nature is undefeated. If she wants it, she gets it. Mm. And I step out of her way, y'all. <laughs> you listen, I do. Yes. <clears throat> I hose them off. Okay, good. So if you can hose them off. But you try to do it uh, like three um, three days, can, three days together. Holds them off really good, really good, because ugh, they could be such a pest, such a pest. I planted over one hundred kale plants in twenty twenty. Less than 10 are still living. Wow. That's good, though. That's still good. You know, less than 10 are still living. So what zone are you in, cool weather farmer? Do you have them in a, um, like a, a tent or, or um, some kind of cold frame or something? Oh boy. Let's see. Coach help. I have a strawberry plant that has so many lush green leaves, but no buds or fruit. What am I doing wrong? Or what do I need to do? Strawberries. So are they are they in a the hanging basket? So if if let me know if, if they're in a hanging basket or not. Let me know. Oh, okay. Thank you, Miss Linda. I knew uh, uh, I knew with you, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have to spend extra money on crazy garden products, right? I have a large container of super juice. Give it to them. Give it to them. Yeah. There you go, Pete. <laughs> they are in the basket on the ground. Okay. So one of the things that I can I, I that I've noticed about the strawberries, I'm not big on growing strawberries, but I've been having strawberries in my yard for my granddaughter for the last two years. So one of the things I notice is that you definitely have to um, um keep that soil moist. Um it don't like to be dried out. So if you work or if you miss uh, uh, giving it water, I think uh, that could be one of your problems, right? So I don't know what kind of fertilizer you use on your plants, but I use 511. And I think if you do, it will help you. We'll do three, yeah, three consecutive days, right, straight. I also found in my garden two leaf footed, but oh my God, and a dead hummingbird moth. 
Oh, wow. I know that's a heartbreaker. Oh. I sold uh, some of the kale directly into the ground. I started some in pots. That's great. I love direct sowing and I direct sow a lot. And I direct sowed some of the seeds that, um, the pepper seeds that I put some in cups, but I also direct sowed some that Antia's garden sent to me. She sent me some, um, wait a minute, I thought I'd seen that box. Oh, here it is. Antia's garden sent me um, these, these pepper from this company. Yeah. Okay, I'm in zone eight. Okay, okay, 511 on the way. All right, doing the super juice thing. Hey, you're going to see a huge difference. That's for real, for real. All right? Yeah. So I don't know if you all saw the video with that, but this is one of the packs. Look at that, y'all. This is um, the seeds Antia's Garden sent to me. And there's six um, seed packs in here. But these things are gorgeous. Absolutely. Somebody said that they were going to frame them. What Jada said she was going to frame them anyway. <laughs> yeah, after we use them all, right? Mm. Thank you uh, for the insight, Mr. Oh, you're so welcome, Coach. You're so welcome. I got potatoes in a tall trash can. That's cool, Roro. I, um, in the video that I have coming up, you will see my potatoes. She's making flowers and a lot of her foliage is dying. So it won't be long before I harvest some potatoes. What a cute seed. Isn't it gorgeous? And oh my God, I love it so much. Those are beautiful seed packs. Yes. Finally got some 511 this weekend. Be careful, Shonsi. <laughs> Be careful with her. Okay. So I've seen some people say, oh, I, I got it on my hand. And I, I it ain't all that bad. It, listen, it washes off, right? So, um, and you will smell it in your garden for about an hour. And after that, maybe not even an hour. After that, the smell is gone. Okay. Let's see if I can get up here. Hoda, hey, baby, visit the golf this weekend and found some mushroom compost at Lowe's. Yeah, got a few bags because it just sounds healthy. They, that is very healthy uh, compost. I like it. I like it. My strawberries did the same thing last year. Lush green leaves, no blooms. I gave them um, the flower bloom fertilizers. Yes, last fall and this spring, boom, right. So so what he was talking about is that he didn't want to spend any money. So I think it is the 10-10-0 or 0 10, 10. That is that bloom uh, from uh, Alaskan um, fish, fish company that makes 511. You could buy that in the store. And um, so do anybody know the real number or, or the real name of it? something bloom but anyway yeah it works it works really well as natives are saying about hers yeah representation matters even in the garden yes yes Santisha, hey baby a new weed popper up popped up all over my garden i pulled them all and used uh them to start a new batch of super juice I love it. I love it because you can use anything that's green in the line, you know? Yes, use it. Mm -hmm. The artwork on a seed pack is adorable. Yes, it is. It's amazing, y'all. Sometimes strawberries just take a break. <laughs> really? I don't mess with them too much because it's relatively cheap here and it's abundance, you know, and I figure it's abundance here. <clears throat> I get mine from Mr. George. And because it is, I don't need to waste space in my yard growing something that is so easily accessible to me. And I know it's organic and I can just 
go to Mr. George and say, I need some strawberries, bro. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, Miss Cherokee said, oh, thank you. All right. All right. More blue. Thank you, Pete. More bloom 01010. That's it. So this will help your strawberries if you want to, you know, spend some money. Not a I don't think it's very expensive, but yeah. More bloom. Right. That's it. Yeah. It's 01010. That's what it is. Yeah. I dropped seven seeds outside in my raised bed, large American leeks. Lacinato kale, purple top turnips, ruby red Swiss shard, spinach, chives, and a red Russian kale on Saturday. Super juiced already. Super juiced is ready. Yes. That stuff is just great. And it just goes, it just mimic nature. That's what it does. If you think about it, like I explained uh, last week is that this is the way God created this thing, you know. Trees in the woods don't need anybody to feed them. A lot of times you could go in the woods and find here in Louisiana. I know I do it all the time. Is that you find fruit trees like fig trees and berries. They're growing big and beautiful and delicious all on their own. No one is giving them 511 or more bloom or nothing. They are feeding themselves, period. And what they do is, in the fall, their leaves fall. And when they leave fall, the leaves decay and they get all the nutrients from their leaves. And this is how they grow. So what we're doing is taking leaves from our plants, putting them in water and giving it to them in a liquid form. And then what they do, boom. <laughs> yeah, they love it. They love it. And I love it too. Yeah. And it don't cost us nothing. Don't cost you nothing. Well, don't cost you nothing. <laughs> yeah. I had no success with strawberries. Yeah. I agree. We don't grow asparagus because we can get good quality asparagus here in the spring and fall and it's cheap yeah so if you find something that's very cheap very accessible where you are you know oh well that's the way i think yeah yeah drop lettuce romaine spinach and seeds today that is great baby because i'm gonna harvest some lettuce and i'm gonna make a big salad because i got some big plants and i love them i love them you know, they're doing well out there. All right, guys. So let's see where where are we and are we done? Guava family. All right, let's see. So we did talk about <clears throat> another way that we know our plants is ready by aromas, shape, and size of your plants. <clears throat> yeah, many um, fruits and vegetables, they change colors. Yes, many color change, size change, right? All right. All right, family. Guava, babies. Guava. Guava Ann. Guava October. Guava Unicorn Lady. Guava Pete. <laughs> oh, your strawberries are in a container. They was born there. <laughs> That's a new one. In that container, we had strawberries from our anniversary. And I grew the seeds back in 2007. So cool. Guava P. Williams. Thank you for being here, baby. Guava Shirley. Woo <clears throat> so you all give me some questions before we get up out of here. All right. 
<clears throat> Guava baby. How often do I give my babies soupy juice? So this is what I do. I give my plants super juice in 511 or sometime I give them just super juice every 10 days. That's how I fertilize my, my garden. Not unless I look at a vegetable and she look, you know, like she on a struggle bus or she just like, oh, <laughs> some, some plants just need attention. So I give them a little something. But other than that, every 10 days, I fertilize my garden every 10 days. Question, um, I'm growing passion fruit for the first time. Do they bloom um, the pretty purple flower before the fruit? I do not know, my love. Duval City Girl, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do not know. I've never grown a passion fruit, so I don't know. I don't know, honey. I think you could go to Juicy with Jay and Juicy with Jay could answer that for you because he grows all that great stuff. Yeah, but I'm sorry, sweetheart. I have a ton of wild blackberries in my yard. I have mixed emotions about them. Yeah, I have been chopping them up because they are invasive. Yes, but sometimes I feel bad because I know it's food. So listen, do I understand that? I do, baby. So this is what a friend of mine did. When she purchased some property, they had berries, blackberries, red berries, and they were just going wild crazy. So what she did, she pulled up some plants and she bought like a long trough, like, you know, and she planted them all in one spot in this trough. All the other ones, she got rid of. She, I mean, she turned the soil to get rid of them because, you know, if you don't dig them out the, from the roots, good, they're going to come back. Um, so this is how she saved some. Uh, but it, you can't save them all, baby. So don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. You know, and I know it's food, but if they're taking over, you know, that's not good. That's not good. So get some and try to put them in a controlled environment and everything else. Well, if you know some people, ask around, do you know, do you want some blackberries, <laughs> plants, you know, try to get rid of them. You, you probably could sell some in your area. Just have them come harvest their own. Come get them. You could, you know, but other than that, just, you know, get rid of them because if they're invasive, then you're not happy. I got to be happy. <laughs> yeah. Game nerd mom. I had some strawberries came up that I thought were dud. Bare roots. Okay. Spring. Spr oh, surprise. They're there. <laughs> cool, baby. Cool. Do you grow primrose flowers? Some are popping up in my yard. No, I do not. But they cool. Yeah. Rock out, blackout. Hello. Have you ever heard or tried growing moringa? It's supposedly really you mean a moringa olifera tree. I got about four growing right now. I've been growing mor moringa for many years. Yeah, it is great. It's a great tree. The passion fruit flowers are so weird and alien looking to me. Many people say that about the kohlrabi too, you know? Yeah. I wish we could grow them in zone 6A. Yeah. Hey, T. Yes, they do flower before the passion fruit. Two Max, how you doing, baby? Good to see you. Mary, hey, guava, guava, baby. Hmm. Um, okay, she's talking to her. Thanks. Um, genius idea. Okay. My primrose research said they are medicinal but invasive. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that you. Oh, yes. Moringa oleifera is um, an amazing tree. It's called so many names the Miracle Life. Um, 
Yeah. I've been I've been growing it for year after year after year. I love it. Hey Miss Linda, I use uh 511 today. Great baby, great. I know your garden love you. <laughs> yeah. My red Russian kale plants are huge. I showed them today on my live. Okay. Then I dug three of them, put them in soil, watered them well, and bagged them up, taking uh, to my friends. Oh, wonderful, wonderful baby. How do you use Moringa for food? Okay, so there's a couple of ways I use Moringa. I have dehydrated Moringa, turn it into a powder in my Ninja, and I sprinkle it in my food when I'm cooking in, like just like I would sprinkle garlic powder and onion powder just so I can get the nutrients in my body, right? It doesn't have a bad flavor. Matter of fact, I can't even tell that it's in there, right? Another way I do is I dehydrate the leaves and I don't powder it. That's the way I like to make teas from it best, right? Also, raw, just go out, get me some leaves, chop it up really good, and sprinkle it in my salad when I'm eating salads. It's very good. And those are just some of the ways I use Moringa, Olifera. I love them. I do. I'll tell you what I did one year. I made some, um, I took a, a big um, balls jar, like this jar, and I stuffed it with um, Moringa leaves. And I put water in it and I just set it in my garage, right? And I shook it every day. And I took that Moringa tea or Moringa Campos tea or whatever it was. And I put it on some of my vegetables because I wanted to know if my plants would receive all these nutrients from this Moringa tree, right? And the plants grew really, 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 really well. So I was happy with that little experiment, right? So I tried to, I did not give that plant Super Juice of 511. I just wanted to use the Moringa tea that I had made for it, right? And that was really cool. Um, the, the plant grew really big, really healthy. So that's another thing I did with uh, Moringa. I planted asparagus in containers because I was told it can be invasive. Yes. Oh, rock out, black out, say, this is so cool. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Uh, oh, my God. It can be a fertilizer, too. Yes. Anything that grows can be a fertilizer. Anything. Anything it really is uh is the tree of life. Yes, it is. It's it's an amazing plant with so many uh nutrients and vitamins, and you know, tree tree having all of these nutrients for the human body. It's it's amazing. And if you are a gardener, you should definitely have a tree in your garden. They're so easy to grow. Tell you what, let me give away some seeds to anyone who don't have any seeds of Moringa. So um, let's see. I'm trying to think of something really quick. I just finished eating the orange. Going to use the peels. For <laughs> Go ahead, Chelsea. That's a wonderful baby. I read I read on web on a website that sassafras leaves are cooked in woolians. If that's the truth, it's the truth. So sassafras leaves are gumbo filet. That's what gumbo filet is. It's the sassafras leaves. So we take it, dehydrate it, and powder it. Boom, gumbo filet. That's what it is. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
So if you want me to send you, I'm going to send you some Moringa Olifera tree seeds. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just write a number because I ain't, I'm not too. Wait a minute, y'all. Oh, 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 thank you, my baby. Um. So I wrote a number. It is between one and 100. So you all can put a number in that you think it is. You can put as many numbers you want at a time. And if you want to win, if you want me to send you some Moringa Olifera seeds. Yeah. <clears throat> between one and 100. Yeah, Bravo family. <laughs> Duval, <laughs> I love that, baby. <laughs> Duval said, I'm going to hit it all. <laughs> Ooh, that's funny. Nobody got it yet. Come on, come on. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Oh, okay. I see it, y'all. I just gotta make sure is she is she the uh the one? Oh, wait a minute. That's not it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, that's not it. No, I saw it. I didn't see it. Let's see. I thought I did. Wow. All right. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, I see it. That's the winner right here. The girl right here. Chelsea. Hey, y'all, baby. Now, um, I'm going to ask Pete. Pete, tell me, is she is she the first one that have it? Is she the first one that have um, 82? Because I don't know if I missed any. I just want to make sure. But no matter what, baby, you're going to get some seeds. Okay. Pete, let me know if she um, if she's the first one with it. Let me know. All right, guys. Y'all can stop now with the numbers. Oh, Lord. I'm way back. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's see what P said. Okay. Congratulations. Our, oh, you checking? Okay. We finished with the numbers now. We finished. We done. Oh, you're so welcome, baby. So um, my email it thank you, Andale. Thank you, Andale. And they'll say stop. <laughs> um 
the New Orleans Gardener at gmail.com and I will send send me your address and I'm gonna send you some Moringa Old Pharisees. All thanks to um what's his name? I don't forgot his name who started started us talking about it. Hey Sunday, how you doing, man? Trey, hey, has anyone ever tried the wicking pot method of growing? I have not. I have a big yard, so, you know. Uh, yes, hers was the first one. Okay, great. All right, baby. All right. Rock out. Yes, that's, that's who started this thing. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hey, Micro Farmer. How you doing? Good to see you here. Congratulations to uh, Shauncee Muhammad. Thank you, baby. I appreciate you being here. So, the New Orleans Garden at gmail.com, and I will send you some Moringa Old Pharisees. Yes. All right. Now, if anybody have any other question before we get up out of here, let's do it. Because y'all know I'm going to eat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, Sunday, how you doing, man? Um, in the garden. Okay, wait a minute. <clears throat> wait a minute. Where was that? Oh, there it is. In the garden. Linda, can you tell me if I can still plant collards in heat? So, <laughs> deep, dark colored greens, like collards, broccoli, lacinato kale, even curly kale. Yes, they can take the heat, all right? But I would put them in the shade, but they could take the heat. All those other greens like mustards and broccoli rob in the middle of summer, at least my son, they got a bolt. But the dark green, thick leaves, vegetables, brassicas, they can handle it. All right? That's a great question. Thank you. Hunting, uh, her, hunting about to call it a night. Rest up, my show all. Thank you. Thank you for being here, man. I hope you feel better. Have a good night rest. Yes, have a good night rest. We done, um, Miss Harrison. Mm. I just finished eating. Was so good. I bet it was. <laughs> yeah, I know your greens always look so good. So I need some advice. Yeah, well, you know, just your dog greens. It will do good. It will do really good um, in the um, in summer. Oh, you do, Andale? Okay, all right. I'm gonna whip up something for you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Um, in the garden. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. All right, all right. I just emailed you, Miss. Okay, baby. Okay, great, great. All right. Have a good night. You all too. You have a good night too. Thank you, Deval City Girl. Yeah. So. <clears throat> You can hear my voice, right? <laughs> I have been singing a lot, but I'm going to give Miss Andell a little verse, just a little bit, all right? You have a new thing you're trying this season. I'm always looking for recommendations on new variety. Oh, <laughs> 
I don't know. Um, there's some things, but I can't remember right off my head. But I tell you what, I will get it together. All right? I will. That was game nerd mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I harvest some tatsoi. Had very little to cook since I ate. I love to eat it raw. I love to make a salad with it. It's just so good. And the stems are so crunchy, you know, good stuff. Good stuff. I have some growing too. Yeah, they are on my uh, my last nerd. P okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Myra. <clears throat> Truly enjoyed the live while I'm up planting my tomato. Oh, thank you, my love. Thank you. All right, y'all. I need the oh, I need the Every hour, Lord, I need Thee. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, I, I come to I come to thee. Mm, I'm done. All right, y'all. Mm, glory, y'all. God is so good, and we need him every day. As a family, we need him every day. All right? Um, D, D, we are not doing that no more. We're done. Amen. I hope everyone has a good week. Amen. Yes, every hour. Every hour we need it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, family. I want to say good night to you all. I'm done. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm sorry, the live. I enjoyed hanging out with you all so much. Yes, everyone have a wonderful evening, T Nog. Thank you for your happy birthday song. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> Who else had a birthday? Uh, Roro. Is she still here? Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. And he comes through you. Oh, thank you, Andel. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Felicia, good night, baby. Oh, Brownie, fantastic live and song. Have a blessed, healthy, and safe week and night and week. Thank you, my baby. Bring me back. Oh, yeah, to sing it in the senior choir. I <laughs> know that's right, huh? Yes. My birthday was Friday. Oh, okay. Roro, you here? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear babies. Happy birthday to you. Boop, boop, boop. Bah. Happy birthday, y'all. Happy birthday. Have a blessed evening. You too. You too, man. You all have a wonderful day. Thanks. This was very informative. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah, real, real birthday too. We had, we had a, what, about three birthdays in the house tonight? 
Mine was Thursday. All right, Trey. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, that's four. The song you just sung, Bless My Soul. Amen, baby. God bless you. God bless you to see many, many more, many more, baby, many more. Holy birthday. Amen. Good night. <clears throat> Good night, family. I hope you all have a beautiful night. I love you all. All right? Y'all have a good night. Later, y'all.